Hello friends, it is I, Dan Phelps. This is On Looping, my series about the techniques, technology, and musical applications of looping. In the next few videos, what I really wanna do is kind of dial back and look at some of the fundamentals of looping, things that you can do with almost any looping pedal out there in the market. It's gonna give you creative and inspirational dividends right away. So without further ado, let's dive in. So on this week's episode, I want to talk about something that I call clouds. Clouds, to me, are arrhythmic loops that contain interesting musical events and textures that provide a really interesting jumping off point for improvisation or writing, or they make great textural beds underneath songs and in the midst of mixes and arrangements. And it's a very simple but very powerful exercise in order to create these. You're basically creating a loop, laying in non-rhythmic sounds and textures, and then usually over three or four rounds of going through the loop, three or four passes through the loop, you layer up these sounds. And they're neat because being arrhythmic, they don't really lock you into any particular tempo. You can try a lot of different things over top of them. But also there is something that happens, you know, by the 12th or 13th time that you hear the loop go around, often there are kind of illogical rhythms that occur in the loop that are really interesting. Your brain starts to hear them as patterns, which I also think is very cool. So for this video, I'm going to use a straightforward looper, the venerable Big Green Line 6 DL4. It has a simple and straightforward looper on it, but you can do this with any looping device that allows you to overdub or do sound on sound. So let's jump into it and I'll show you a couple of different ideas for creating these loops and sounds. So I've got my Big Green Line 6 delay pedal here, and the only other effect that I have going on is some spring reverb from the Tallbird spring reverb, the Benson, because I like to have a little bit of something after the looper to kind of help tie all the sounds together. I don't really like it if the loop sound and the guitar sound kind of feel like they're just dry and happening in a sterile space, if you will. So a little bit of spring reverb, but that's it. And I'll show you really basically uh, the sort of fundamentals of this type of looping. We're gonna make a little cloud here. So I'm gonna just start by making a loop. It'll go almost immediately into overdub mode, and then I'll put a few layers on, and we'll hear the magic unfold, hopefully. Here we go.
so there you have it. That's the basic idea is that you would create this little bed of sound and it becomes this really fascinating and interesting thing to play over. It's nice, uh, more interesting to me than just a static pad. So that's the basic approach to creating clouds. And now the interesting thing is that it can, the cloud can be wildly different based on what kind of sounds you feed it. Obviously, you can just play the guitar like I did. I think that harmonics are a really interesting texture. You can do these octave up sort of pick harmonics. There's a couple of really interesting spots in the guitar where you can get these different harmonics. Like here at the third fret, if you're on the bridge pickup. And then also up here at the ninth fret. And just as something that you can try at home, if you create a loop out of these sounds, it kind of creates a interesting sort of E dominant seven mixolydian sort of vibe. Let's try that. have that idea. My line six delay is behaving a little funny today, so you might see some extra stops. This is just reality. I'm not trying to put a really shiny varnish on anything that I do here. <laughs> so if you see me struggle with this a little bit, that's the reality of what's going on. Uh, another idea of things that you can feed the loop. I should say also that another approach to this is to create a blank loop or an empty loop and then lay things on top of it. I think that's kind of cool because it sort of leads to yet another level of randomization and loopiness, kind of off-centeredness, if you will, because you're not actually conscious of the beginning and end of the loop from that first time that you play. So let's try this. I'm gonna use the volume knob on my guitar. I'm gonna roll back the tone a little bit so I have this sort of kind of a rounder sound, less string and finger noise. Uh, I'm gonna create a blank loop and I'll start to lay some really long notes in there and we'll see if we can create sort of a different kind of cloud. Those, those last two clouds with those sort of harmonics make me think of, you know, in a movie when you see a shot of like an attic and there's dust motes floating around and some of them are out of focus and some of them are in focus or when you see a shot of lights at a carnival boardwalk and you there are some lights are in focus, some are out of focus. That kind of depth of field thing is what it brings to mind. This, I think, will be a much more sort of wide open and bucolic sounding sort of texture. I hope, we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna create a blank loop of some length of time. There we go, now we're overdubbing, and I'm gonna just lay some of these long notes into it.
quirky, quirky green Line 6 delay pedal. So you get the idea there. It kind of makes for an interesting backdrop from which to improvise over. If you're just kind of noodling and looking for new ideas and maybe you're working on your bending, being able to bend up to certain notes and pitch, uh, I, think it's, I think it's interesting. It, it's kind of more open than a jam track or a chord progression. I like it because it allows me to experiment with shifting between kind of different harmonic ideas. Uh, and, and also, I kind of tried to slide into a chord progression there to give you an idea. Even if you're a singer-songwriter, there's a lot of vibe and sort of help that comes from having a backdrop like this over which to play and sing on top of. So super interesting, super powerful, super simple tool to put in your toolbox. Well, that's it for me. I hope you really enjoyed this video and found it useful, and it's gonna hopefully give you hours of intriguing exploration using this technique. If you've enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my weekly videos. You can also go to my website, danphelps.com, and subscribe to my email newsletter. I email about once a week and try to include helpful additional tips and insights as well as lists of things that I'm reading and listening to as of late. I think you would enjoy receiving my emails. And you can also comment here in the comments, DM me on any of the social platforms. All those links will be in the show notes below. Thank you so much for taking your time to spend with me and hope you're doing well. See you later.